President Trump is going to war with the deep state. And now that they're cornered, they're bound to fight back. So will the president go for the throat and strip their security clearances? For the last few days, the administration's been threatening to shut out six former members of the intelligence community. Former CIA directors John Brennan and Michael Hayden, former director of national intelligence James Clapper, my ultimate foe. Former FBI directors James Comey and Andrew McCabe. He was acting director for a while. And former National Security Advisor Susan Rice. All of them have been highly critical of the president, which is fine. They have every right to do that. But why do they all still have clearance? Brennan called Trump's press conference with Vladimir Putin treasonous. Hayden said he was laughing at Trump. And Comey just can't shut up about anything, especially voting Democrat. But critics say the administration's threats are counterproductive, including House Speaker Paul Ryan and anti-Trump GOP Senator Bob Corker. I don't even know her. Listen. I think he's trolling people, honestly. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is something that's in the purview of the executive branch. I think some of these people have already lost their clearances. That's the kind of thing that happens in Venezuela, where I was just recently. So uh, um, you just don't do that. And I can't, I can't believe they even allowed it to be aired, just to be honest. I mean, it's a, it's a banana republic kind of thing. What, did Adam Schiff and Nancy Pelosi have a baby and name it Bob Corker? With all due respect, Senator, this is not Venezuela. We're debating about this. We're arguing about it. And, Mr. Speaker, the president doesn't bluff. Everyone knows that. And guess what? Political analysts say he does have the right to revoke security clearance for whoever he uh, wants to no longer have it. Great sentence. So is Trump playing hardball? Or is this an empty threat? Joining me now from Washington, senior editor at The Federalist and Fox News contributor, Molly Hemingway. Molly, welcome back to the show. Great to be here with you. So for fans of limited government and uh, certainly shrinking the scope of government, why do so many people have continued security clearance to begin with? Well, there's this idea that when you have a transition from one administration to the next, it can be helpful for people to continue to have their security clearances in case they need to be called in to share information or whatnot. But in this case, we are, what, 18 months out? There is no more transition. And if there were, these are the people who are going to their Twitter accounts to scream about treason, and, and they're, you know, they're like in a competition to see who can act like the most junior high school girl of the bunch. Or they're going on the media, and they're talking, sort of using that security clearance that they had and the access to information that they had to sort of portray themselves as ex experts on all things that are continuing to happen, there's no need for them to continue to have that, even if it helps them have more lucrative contracts uh, with, with government contractors or the media. Well, and also, you know, what's interesting is the implication that many of them make that, you know, I am such a big person. I am not going to divulge what I know. But what I know is so bad and destructive. You have to trust me that the president is horrible. Uh, maybe there's some other motivation, you know, perhaps than them just having access, full access to the surveillance trough for so well, long. It, it really is one of these calling cards of the swamp. When you leave a sensitive government position, if you can maintain your clearance, it gives you it gives you more money. I mean, it is a very swampy thing, unlike what Bob Corker said about it being like Venezuela. It is very bureaucratic and whatnot. But I think most Americans look at this and they just wonder, why do these people still have these clearances? What good is it for them to have these clearances, particularly when you can actually give it out on a temporary basis if needed, like if someone's testifying about their nefarious actions while mm -hmm. they were in government or whatnot, they can get a temporary clearance to, to review the documents that they might need to for testimony. So there really is, this is just, there's a big problem with overclassification of information and then having too many people with access to that classified information. We could really yeah. use a lot more transparency. What's classified needs to be classified and only the people who really need to see that information should have that clearance. That is kind of the opposite of the way the swamp is operating right yeah, now. Yeah, because otherwise the clearance is absolutely meaningless. But it's really funny because you're right. There are uh, temporary forays back into the world of sensitive information if that is necessary. If you have to call someone in in order to give you context on, you know, a, a policy or an issue or a war that's, uh, you know, 10 years or decades past, that's fine. You can do that on a temporary basis. But the whole thing is just strange. You know, I've always thought that there are, the president has too many uh, Secret Service agents. 
Yeah, well, the, I mean, it's good to have security there, too. But the other thing I think people need to remember about this, these are like primary leakers of information. And this is something where I think, again, a lot of Americans look at this and go, why isn't the government doing anything to crack down on all these leaks of classified information, some of which is really important classified information, like how they were surveilling Trump associates and, you know, FISA wiretaps and whatnot. So... In, in general, it would be nice to see the government crack down hard on all this leaking and just transmitting of information that doesn't well, need if, to be if, transmitted. Well, if nothing else, let's say that, that these security clearances are not revoked, and, and that's fine. I imagine the president may be trolling. He may not do that. There's, I don't have a problem with that, but I do think it's very important that we understand how all of this works. And the fact that all of these agencies are able to share information without warrants and there are an untold number of Americans who are caught up in the, uh, the Section 702 net of the FISA law that was reauthorized in January. The FBI doesn't even divulge how many Americans are caught up in transmissions, whether it's texts or email or even videos that are nabbed on various devices. Or but they all, lie, or they lie about how many Americans are caught up in this, as Ed we've seen James with one Clapper of the people did. in question who has a security, or who, you know, who was, we're talking about his security clearance. Yes. yes, and he's the one who, of the group, is protesting the loudest. I don't have a problem with people calling truth to power. That's fine. That's the job of journalists. But don't say that you don't have a political dog in the hunt and then call uh, the threat of losing your clearance uh, partisanship in a hyper-politicized environment because that's essentially what these people are doing. They're acting as political operatives. So you can't claim to be offended by politicization if, in fact, you know, all the people out there are, if they're guilty of one thing, it's fueling an yes. over-politicized environment. It is a bit petty and partisan, but if you want to see petty and partisan, just go to any of these guys uh, Twitter feeds and you will see enough petty partisanship to last a lifetime. Oh my gosh, it would be the best sitcom. Um, <laughs> Molly Hemingway, thank you so much for being here. Great to be here. I love your work.